It's a great opportunity to you know be in front of you and share my experience uh, with butterflies and how this organization got built and some interesting facts about butterflies uh, we are actually not aware of which happens in our surroundings. So uh, let me just briefly introduce you this organization to you. It was started in the year 2011 with the aim of conserving the butterflies of Western Ghats. As we all know, in the recent years, we have seen a drastic decline in the butterfly population. So there are a lot of reasons why we have seen a decline. Of course, the major threat might be the destruction of the habitat by destroying the forest, by destroying the home of the butterfly. So then, of course, the use of pesticides in the field, which have also affected butterflies, and then some na natural cause like forest fire can wipe out the butterfly population in the area. So the intention of conserving the butterflies and also the intention of educating people about butterflies, we thought of dedicating about seven acres of land for the butterflies, which is a natural home for the sea. So, so far we have recorded 136 species of butterflies in the area and all over Western Ghats we have 339 species and all over India it is about 1200. So I have some videos what has been exclusively taken from the park and let me just show you that videos and also explain about butterfly behavior and some interesting facts about butterflies which will be revealed through this video. Let us start the video. So it all starts with the courtship display even for the butterflies there, okay, where the male is involved in continuously displaying in front of the female. You can see the female is sitting there. And the male is continuously displaying. Okay? He tries his best to persuade her. You can also see he touches his scales, which releases chemical signals, the pheromones, to impress the and tranquilize the female. So she is interested. You can see the male, the female is also joining the courtship display. Okay, you can see in the next video again, she again sits there and he does his best and leaves the area. She feels he feels that she is not anymore interested. So Normally, if the courtship display is successful, okay, there will be mating taking place and the female will go in search of the host plant. So let us see another courtship display of the southern birdwing, which is the largest of all the Indian butterflies. You can see the male continuously displaying and doing his level best okay, to try and impress her. You can see the female, she is watching the show. Okay? And finally, she is the one who is going to decide whether to accept or not, depending upon the strength of the male. So, so, let us move to the next part, okay? So, I, as I mentioned earlier, if the courtship display is successful, then normally the uh, in mating takes place, the female will go in search of the host plant to lay eggs. So, every butterfly has got its own host plant to lay eggs. They're very strict about the host plant, they're very specific. So, if you remove any caterpillar from its host, it will die out of hunger, but it will not touch any other leaf. So, the female will go in search of the host plant, she lays her eggs, she finds the, uh, in this case it is emigrant, the female emigrant laying eggs on a plant called as Cassia, Cassia alata. So you can see in the video there, how it lays the eggs. So the egg is laid, I hope all of you can see the egg, right? The small, so the egg is laid here also. So if I want to show them, because this is not working in fact. So the egg is laid under the leaf here. You can see in the next video again, this is the female southern birding. So you can see the egg being laid, right? So that is the egg, that is where the life of the butterfly starts. So within about four to five days, the caterpillar will come out of it. It will start feeding upon the egg shell first. Okay, this is about what happens in the life of the caterpillar in fact. It feeds upon the egg shell first, which is very nutritious meal for the caterpillar. And then, once it fully grows, it will go in search of the hideout for occupation. So this is the southern birdwing caterpillar. It is fully grown. Now it is, its job is to go for the pupation process. So it has found, found a hideout for pupation. So once it finds a hideout, it goes for the pupation stage. Let us just forward that video and see that. The pupation the skin ruptures at the top and the entire skin is shedded and it is thrown out. So this is another amazing thing happening in the life cycle of the butterfly. Okay, where the individual completely changes. You can see the skin shedding at the top actually, rupturing and the skin along with the mandibles are thrown okay, because the mandibles are of no use for the butterfly. The butterfly is going to get its proboscis for the rest of its life. So the, along with the skin that is thrown out and you can see the pupa is shown up. So this is nothing but molting, shedding of the skin where the butterfly goes to pupation stage. So once it 
reaches the pupal stage, it ensures that the skin also will be thrown out because if the skin is left like that, it can grab the attention of any parasitic vest and the parasitic vest might come and lay except for the body of the cat pupa and might kill it. So it has to throw away that skin. So let us stop here. So you can see this pupa, it is, uh, you know, it is about almost 15 days it has formed the pupa. So normally the emergence of the pupa, uh, sorry, emergence of the butterfly from the pupa might be a voluntary process. The butterfly decides depending upon the climatic conditions outside. If the conditions are not favorable, it can stay there inside the pupa for months together. So you can see a day before the emergence, the pupa actually becomes transparent and the butterfly is visible through the pupa. So that's an indication. The next day the butterfly is going to pop out of the pupa. You can see in the video how the butterfly emerges out of the pupa. It pushes the chrysalis open and this is the time when the insect blood flows to the veins of the wings and the wings has to be hardened. So you can see the eclosion of the common rose butterfly here. So it pushes itself with force out of the chrysalis. So you can see the head coming out first there and it is slowly moving its first leg and gripping it on the trick. And the excess liquid, the birth liquid, just goes to the empty chrysalis. So it will completely move out of the pupa and holds on to the nearby leaf there. You can see that. So this is the time when the butterfly is very vulnerable to attack from predators. Any predators might easily attack it as it is not able to fly. So, but fortunately for this butterfly, it is poisonous, okay, it won't, uh, it won't be attacked by any predators, uh, especially the birds, okay, for the praying mantis spiders, it doesn't matter. Birds normally won't attack such uh, poisonous butterfly. So, why, are, why do they become poisonous? That's because during the caterpillar state, they feed upon the host plant which is poisonous. That's, that's the defense mechanism. So, whatever toxins what is found in the host plant are imbibed by the caterpillar which makes the butterfly unpalatable, okay. The, so, birds tend to avoid such prey. So it will take about another one to two hours for the wings to completely dry and then for the butterfly to take its first flight. You can see in the next video how the southern bird wing will take its first flight. You can see the pupa below there. It is a freshly emerged southern bird wing, the largest of all the Indian butterflies. Okay? We have about 1200 species of butterflies in India and southern bird wing is the largest among all of them. So this butterfly, okay, you can see how beautiful the metallic shine of the butterfly is. This is an endemic to Western Ghats. The name is the Malabar Bandit Peacock, which is found only in Western Ghats. It was also rated as the third beautiful by Winter Blith, who had written the field guide on butterflies of Indian region. So, and this, uh, this is also the logo of the butterfly park. Okay, the Malabar Bandit Peacock butterfly, which is endemic to Western Ghats. So, let us see. This was taken in a slow motion, you know, cam. So, this is the Black Raja. So the name is Raja, they, they love to feed upon dungs, okay, they feed upon, uh, you know, carnivore shit, so this is all their favorite food, the tawny Raja, the black Raja, but in this case it is feeding upon a rotten grape. Next, this is the closer picture of the body baron, you can see how the butterfly is using its proboscis in order to sip the liquid. So you can also see the compound eyes of the butterfly, this is a, we are going to the extreme closer. You can see how it moving, how is it is moving, it's proboscis and this proboscis is very porous in nature, it is a capability to suck. So this you can see a uh, clear case of attack from a bird. You can see the, how the wing is torn in the, like you know, the, some bird has attacked it, it has escaped the bird attacks, so luckily. So one importance of butterflies in nature is that they form a part of the food web. They become food for predators like birds, praying mantids, lizards, frogs. There are many predators which are dependent upon the butterflies and other insects for their survival. So that's one importance. If I'm talking about the second importance, they help in pollination. Of course, the bees are the major pollinators. Uh, if you're eating something today, whether vegetables or fruits, that's because of the bees or butterflies which pollinate and helps in the production of fruits and seeds. So if these creatures vanish from the earth, okay, we are also going to follow them soon. So it's high time we think about butterfly or bee conservation and conserve them for the future generation and for us to live. So by conserving butterflies, in fact, you are conserving the humanity. So let us move on to the next video now.
So it is here it is feeding upon the rotting papaya. So this is the autumn leaf butterfly, another interesting species. The upper side looks like almost like a leaf, but if you look at the uh, sorry, underside looks like almost like a leaf, but if you look at the upper side, you can see how beautiful the tawny color is. Okay, so it has got that beautiful tawny color and it is sipping nectar from the flower. So underside the leaf-like thing, it is a defense mechanism to escape from predators. Okay, but the upper side is very striking and beautiful. And this butterfly lays eggs on a plant called a Pseudoranthemum malabaricum. Okay, next video. So this butterfly was uh, videographed in the month of August last year, a very beautiful and bold butterfly. I call it as a bold butterfly because you are going to see why, why it is actually called as a bold butterfly. So you can see how beautiful the wing pattern is and this is also a rare butterfly and you can see it is sipping liquid from the rotting jackfruit. Okay. So just go to the next video. You can see the ants. They have killed the evening brown butterfly. Okay, these weaver ants are very aggressive. They are known to kill butterflies. They are caterpillars, and you know they are known to eat. Uh, you know also attack some fresh pupa sometimes and freshly emerged butterflies many a times. So there is something interesting to be told. If these you know these ants actually are known to attack any butterflies, any caterpillar except the Lycidae family. There are totally six families of butterflies, but one family of butterfly has got a very interesting symbiotic relationship. So the same ants which you saw attack the evening brown are known to protect this caterpillar of the Lysinidae family. Okay. So this is the caterpillar what you are seeing here. So this is the caterpillar of the butterfly called as oak blue and you can see it is picking up on diasporia actually and there are few ants which are patrolling near the caterpillar. So instead of attacking the ants actually protect the caterpillar. So again there are two reasons why these ants protect the caterpillar instead of attacking them. Ants normally love sweet secretions. So the caterpillar is known to produce this honeydew secretion in the 11th segment which is given to the ants as the protection fee. And in return the ants protect the caterpillar. They remain very loyal to the caterpillars. They protect them even during the pupal stage when they don't get anything back in return till the butterfly images out. So that's a very interesting symbiotic relationship. So there is another reason why the ants protect that is because the caterpillar is known to release pheromones that is chemical signals similar to the pheromones released by the larva of the ants. So the caterpillar confuses the ants. The ants thinking caterpillar as it's, it, get, it gets the feeling that it's uh, the caterpillar is its own larva and it is known to carry inside the ant nest and place it and ensure 100% security. So this is how the caterpillar fools the ants. So and that you can see the honeydew secretion being given to the ants is a protection fee. This particular ant is communicating with the caterpillar and asking for the honeydew secretion. So that's a very interesting symbiotic relationship seen between butterflies and ants. Moving into the next video. So this is the southern birdie, the largest of all the Indian butterflies what you saw. The Freshly accrues and soil flight. And next video, we will the next video. This is a hummingbird bee moth, okay, which looks like a bird actually, but a day flying moth. Majority of the moths are nocturnal in habit, but this is an exceptional case. This is a day flyer. So, butterflies are also known to exhibit territorial behavior. You can see the great egg fly chasing away with the male autumn leaf. So, they are also very territorial. Some of the species like grey pansies, so you can see the male chase away chase with the female. So that's uh, pretty common, you know, even if any trespasses, a butterfly sitting as a watchdog, like a watchdog, any trespasses can be chased away. It doesn't mind even if it is a bird or a human being also. The bird might actually turn back and kill and eat the butterfly. But it doesn't matter for the, uh, you know, territorial male normally. So you're seeing this bunch of butterflies, you know, they're actually sucking the alkaloid content from the plant. So this is a common sight in the month of August and September in the butterfly park. Uh, so you see a lot of them gather together for alkaloid sucking. Only males are involved in this alkaloid sucking. Going to the next video. So only male butterflies are involved in this is stuff. So I mentioned that one importance of butterflies in nature is they form a part of the food web. So here is few examples with the videos for you. 
there is a praying man is sitting on the Agni Mantha flag waiting patiently for the butterfly to come. I hope you can see this praying mantis here. So this is the praying mantis, it feeds upon the butterflies. Okay, you can see there is a great butterfly which is ready to sit on the Agni Mantha flag and you can see how it attacks. Luckily the butterfly escapes. Not all the time all the butterflies are lucky. You can see in the next video the praying mantis had already made the kill and it is eating the great egg fly. So this is one importance. Okay, we move into the next video. I will show you the crab spider. In between it also looks at my camera actually. Uh, so this is the next video. So you can see a crab spider waiting patiently and sitting in the flag here. So this is very well camouflaged and unfortunately the butterfly has got a blur vision. It is not able to detect this ambush predator lying motionless without any movement. You can see how, it, how the crash spider attacks. So it is cunningly looking at the, watching the butterfly, not giving any movement and waiting patiently for the butterfly to closely approach it. Very patient. Here it goes. And that's the attack. So the insect, this crash pad is known to suck the liquid from the uh, you know, butterfly, the insect blood from the butterfly and going to leave it dry actually. Okay, so this is, these are some examples how it forms a part of the food web. So let us see the last video, a happy dark blue tiger flying away after it is nectar. So I was talking about you know, how bold some of the butterflies are. The blue nawabs is you know, known to defend itself so well. I can show you in the video. It actually, you know, there is an ant which attacks the blue nawab. So the ants are normally known to attack. You can see the ant has caught the proboscis of the butterfly here. And it is trying to bring it down. It has slightly caught the proboscis. These are very aggressive ants, not going to leave it so easily. The blue nawab doesn't fly. It actually lifts the ant. It takes the ant, it lifts it. And then it kicks the ant. And the ant just walks it. Okay? So this was very interesting to note this behavior, a very bold one in fact. So this is why I call it as a bold one. So this is the logo of the butterfly park here. The graphic imitation of the Malabar banner peacock what you saw in the video. It was the third beautiful butterfly for winter bit. So it is endemic to Western Guards. The organization started in the year 2011. We put host plants, nectar plants, you know. I told there are four stages in the life cycle of the butterfly. And uh, we have conserved the plants, forest plants, we are putting more, propagating more host plants for the butterfly population to sustain. And along with that, we have put a lot of nectar plants where the butterflies naturally get attracted. So moving on to the next slide. So this is how uh, the butterfly park looks, a natural habitat for butterflies without any plastic modifications being done. All the native plants are intact. So we conduct awareness program every year for students. Uh, that's a free awareness program what we conduct every year. And uh, we, uh, we also uh, take them in the field with, along with the volunteers to get a, you know, a practical exposure outside in the field and for, you know, for, so that the younger generation will understand butterflies in nature better. So if you are talking about butterflies and moths, they both belong to the order Lepidoptera. So normally they get attracted to light at your home, so majority of them are moths. Of course there are some butterflies which also get attracted, majority of the moths are nocturnal in habit. So if I am talking about the differences about butterflies and moths, if you look at the antenna of the butterfly, it is swollen at the tip, whereas in case of moths, they have a pointed antenna. So this is a butterfly or a moth? How many of you saying it is a butterfly? Moth? No one? Yes. That is a butterfly, of course. You can see the wings vertically folded and the antenna it is swollen at the tip. So we have recorded so far 136 species of butterflies as I said earlier out of the 339 species found in Western Ghats. So you can see the common group, these are the photos which have been taken from the butterfly park. This is the common rose butterfly which you saw the emergence of the butterfly from the people. This is the making of the crimson rose. This is the largest of all the Indian butterflies. You can see the female up there and the male. So they exhibit sexual dimorphism. The male and female have different wing patterns. Some butterflies have different wing patterns. So you can easily identify in the field. But some, uh, they, are they have similar wing pattern. So you might not be able to distinguish them in the field. So this is a blue mom butterfly. It is mud actually. You can see the proboscis touching the ground. 
and it is sipping nutrients from the wet soil. So butterflies also get attracted to wet soil patches because the soil constitute of probably the sodium in it, which is a very necessary diet for the butterfly. So this is a striped tiger, the cruiser. So these are some of the butterflies picked from the park. This is clipper, a very a ray, uh, earlier considered a rare forest butterfly, but pretty common in the butterfly park now. This is a painted lady. So we already discussed about this. So uh, butterflies are also a good indicator, they indicate how rich is our ecological system. So if you have a good number of Malabar banded peacocks in your area, that's an indication the forest is rich. So that's another importance of butterflies in nature. Yeah, finish off the presentation. I thank all of you, the entire team, uh, you know, for giving me uh, such a great opportunity to be in front of you. Thank you.